Hey everyone, so today I thought to myself let's do a video that's been requested a lot by my students which is how do you paint inside of ZBrush, how do you use custom alphas or how do you create custom alphas, how to use reflection textures such as chrome and stuff like that inside of ZBrush and how do you use a stencil. So I have a demo head loaded here. The first rule about painting inside of ZBrush is you have to have a high amount of subdivision level. So this process happens at the end of the actual mesh workflow and creation workflow. All right? So if I have a very low polygon count, which is around 12,000 right now, and I start painting, so let me get a color over here. So you would notice that with the low polygon count, the painting goes very jagged. All right, that's because it's actually painting on top of this surface with those quads. So the higher the subdivision, the better it will give you a result. So if I go to my geometry tab right now, and I increase the subdivisions, maybe one more, to around 800,000, you will see that's a lot seamless. There's no jagged edges. Okay, so that's very important to start with. Next, if I actually change the painting brush, I have to first of all set whatever the skin tone is going to be first. So I'm going to go to my material right here. I'm going to go to skin shade. If I can find it, I always lose it. Flat color, no. Frame, nope, 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 nope. Skin shade, where are you? I'm using the 2020, so it's a bit weird. There we go, skin shade. It's pure white. I always start with pure white. But the problem is that if I change the color right now, it will change the color of the subtools and everything else. I don't want that. I need to set the color first. So what I do is I go to pure white, I go to my color, and I say the fill object command right here. This will ensure that whatever color I paint with will not change the color of the skin. It will just change the color of the actual brush. All right. So. We're going to take a tip from 16th, 16th, 17th century painters where they create hot spots and cold spots first. Meaning on the face, you have cold spots, which are going to be the blue, and hot spots, which are going to be the red. So I'm going to go with a dark red right here. And I'm going to start painting with my standard brush and make sure that you have RGB here on and Z add and Z sub off okay, to be able to paint. So I'm going to start painting the cold spots. Typically, I like to use a standard brush with a color spray. This gives me a bit more coverage and a bit more variety around it. So hot spots are going to be the cheeks. Let me just decrease a little bit my brush size here and the intensity. So the cheeks, the nose area right here, the lips, the ears, There we go, a little bit on the eyes, right here. The jawline is going to be pretty cold here, so here we want a bit more warmth around the lip area. There we go, the head, just a little bit. And now we're going to go with the neck and the blood vessels. So we do know that there's vessels that pass by the neck. So we're going to do a little bit of warm spots here and a little bit here. Just like so. Next, we're going to go to the blue color. So what I like to do is I like under my model to paint a very small red spot right here. And I do this because I can actually press C on my keyboard. So let's say I want the white, I can press C, it will take the white. Notice over here, it changed the colors. If I press C on the red, it will take the red that I used for the actual warm spots. I'm gonna take a blue right here and paint the blue right there. Press C on that blue, it will give me the same color. So now I'm gonna draw the cold spots, such as the chin, the jawline, but on the nose, the eyes, and the forehead. 
This might seem like a lot of color, but don't worry, everything will get blended later on. What do I mean by blended? It's basically the colors are going to mix, like so. It gives you a little bit of purple here, if you notice. A little bit of purple. And that's not a bad thing. We want those kind of effects happening. So a little bit on the neck, right here, and behind the ears. And there we go. So right now we have the cold spots, the warm spots on the face. And now we have to get a skin shade. So I have to go to a very light orange, very, very light orange. Closer to yellow. It's a bit too yellow, so I'm going to go a bit more orange. Better. Reduce my Z intensity for the RGB, sorry, the RGB intensity right here. I'm going to reduce it by a lot. And now I'm going to start painting the skin color. So as you can see, you have those underlying little red spots and little blue spots. It's very good to have those. A little bit more on the chin. All right, and now we're gonna go back, drop down, the brush. I'm going to take a red. I kind of drew on, on the bottom of it. That's my fault right here. I'm going to go for another red. And paint very gently on certain areas. You take your time doing this step. It's very important. There we go. Around the nose area. Your job is to basically control the RGB intensity. So I want like around a one right now. And I'm just gonna keep painting just so I can get that little underlying red to pop out right there. On the cheeks. A bit more on the ears. I want a bit more over here. There we go, because we want a little bit of blue around the cartilage of the ear. Around the eyes. Now this red is a bit too much, so I'm going to take a C from this skin color and just try to fade it out a little bit more. There we go, much better. So a little bit more blue, very fainted blue here. I don't want a lot of blue, just enough to show these. Uh, now, you have to understand something different between um, a female and a male. It's very important. So if you have a female, you will notice that the blue over here is not that strong. But with a male, it's a bit more blue and green, a little bit around the bearded areas. So a bit on the nose. Red. And there you have it. And definitely take your time doing this. So here I'm mixing a bit of blue and a bit of red just to give it a bit of a purple ish color right here. So it's doing pretty well. I want a bit more red over here under the, the no, under the nose. Just a little bit. There we go. Very good. So now let's say that your character actually has, let's say, scars and stuff like that. What you can do here is use your RGB plus your Z sub to be able to create, and maybe an alpha, let's say an alpha like this, to be able to create a colored textured sculpt so let's say a red so if i click and drag right now one two 
one second, so I'll take in the color. There we go. I have to increase the intensity just a little bit. So this will allow you to create sculpt with an actual color inside of it, like a scar or anything like that. But make sure that your subdivision is pretty high. So what you can do here is take, for example, the eye. Create those little indentations and scars. You can change your alpha to something else. that, smooth it out a little bit, giving you that look you're looking for with the sculpted actually material. So this is how you sculpt skin and use alphas to your advantage with RGB. Now I had a question about what do I do with reflection. Now reflection is actually a material. Since we set the color to fill object which is a skin shade, if I change the material right now the actual model should not change. Let me try it again, sorry skin shade where are you? Skin shade, color, fill the object to a white. If I change the material, it should not change anymore. There we go. So now I'm able to paint with that reflection. So M paints the chrome. Okay. If I go MRGB, which is the material plus the RGB, and I change the color, it will change the color of the actual chrome. Now I have like a red. If I go to blue, it will paint a blue. And that's how you use reflections inside of ZBrush. It's just basically painting the same. But the problem with painting a material is that this happens. It jags the edges. Even with smoothing, nothing happens. So you have to be very careful how you utilize certain things like this. Preferably keep them on a subtool, meaning that if I have a sculpt and I have a subtool right here. What I can do for the subtool, let's say I have, um, I don't know, chrome eyes or reflective eyes, I could use that. So I can just change the material for this only, go to a white or to a red maybe. Dark red color, fill object, and that's it. And I can go back to my face and say skin shade, and I have chromatic eyes, like so. So that's how you can use your material in MRGB to be able to create reflections. So another question that was asked was creating alphas. So how do you create a custom alpha? I'm going to go into my Subtools, insert a plane. <coughs> Excuse me. Insert a plane, make sure that's white. <coughs> so make sure your color is full white. There we go. Insert plane. Scale it up. To fill the entire screen and hide the other subtools. We just want this one. Now this actual model is a thousand polygons, that's not enough to create an alpha. So what we're going to do is subdivide Control D as much as possible until uh, 1 million is perfect. I'm going to actually keep it at 1 million by deleting the lowest subdivisions and keeping it there. And now we can sculpt on top of this. So let's say I want to create an ornament, right? I don't know, something like that. BCB. Let me change the material of this to something a bit easier to see. There we go. Okay. 
All right, let's move everything down. And let's flatten some areas. Give it a bit more of a textured feel. I should not take these, so I'm going to rotate those a little bit just to get this angle. There we go. Could be anything you want. You can even create a custom alpha by getting it from the internet and just painting it on top of this and having it in your library inside of that brush. Right now I'm just creating a custom one that I created for whatever reason I need it. I guess that's it, you're done with this. Just make sure it fills the entire screen like so. Then I'm gonna go to my alpha. Right here. Say grab document. What this will do, it will create an alpha from whatever you painted on. Check on the alpha tab right here that everything is set, because if it's not, you can actually modify certain things such as the contrast, making sure that if there is any fall off gray in the background, it will be removed, like so. All right, and now we can just go to Subtools and hide this, and take the face, go back to my skin shade, there we go, and now I can actually use this, BTS, drag rectangle, Use this alpha and I can actually create the alpha that I created before. Now sometimes it gives you these little planes, it's fine, just smooth them down. And this is your custom alpha. Now how do you create a stencil? Stencil is pretty much the same as an alpha except that you're able to paint on top of it and it gives you a bit more control. Here I don't have control over how the alpha reacts, it's basically what it is when I paint it on. It's just a drag rectangle and I'm just painting it on. Now, a stencil is a bit different. It's a piece of paper that goes on top of the mesh and your brush strokes will allow the details to pop out. Okay? So this is where a stencil is, right here. I'm gonna put stencil on. I need to get the alpha first. There we go, so I have this not too much, I would like to transfer, so I go to my alpha, I have this, I would like to transfer this and make ST, so let's make stencil. Once I do this, I have a stencil. So what I can do here is rotate my shape around that stencil. BDS, let's say, normal dots, no alpha. And what we're gonna do is invert this As you can see, if I paint on top of it, I will get the details I'm looking for. Now, I'm painting in a very harsh way. You should not do this. Let me invert again the, uh, the stencil. No. For an alpha such as this, it's not very practical because my alpha is not very deep. You have to have a bit more depth inside of it. So I'm going to go BST, try again. So wherever my brushstroke goes on top of the stencil, it will create the details I'm looking for. Not very practical, I prefer using alphas, but this is very, very good technique to using, for example, for dragon scales or the, the skin of a dragon, other than the alpha because sometimes you don't want it to be exactly the same. Instead of smoothing the alpha down, you would rather use your stencil and your brush to put the details where you want them to be. There we go. So what else was it was required? So the stencil was done. Alphas, coloring and texturing, and there we go. So when it comes to hard surface modeling, 
uh, or paints are, or sorry for painting it's exactly the same as you would paint something like this but you would use more materials and more colors on top of it now to give you an idea of how to do painting for hard surface modeling such as uh, steampunk or something that is very high detail with tubes and stuff like that or like respirators and uh, I don't know screws and stuff like that what you have to do is separate everything into sub tools and use those sub tools as an actual color and fill the object itself and then paint whatever you have to paint on top of it all right we have to make sure that the sub tool is completely enveloped in color it's not like painting normally because if you're using materials and you're painting something like chrome it's going to give you the details that we talked about which is basically the the jagged edges that you saw before so if i take a chrome for an example and i'm painting on top of it it's going to look very jagged like so especially on hard surface modeling which is very unappealing so what you want to do is use that as subtools, multiple subtools, and just fill the object itself with the specific material you're looking for, and then paint on top of it the specific color if you want to change the colors. And that's about it. So I hope this helps, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you. Bye.